Warning, I swear a lot. Hi everyone, how you doing? Welcome back to Renowned Explorers. Um, obviously, the la the two videos I did on this went up recently, but I actually recorded those roughly a year ago now, I think, before my PC just died, like, in a severe way. Uh, but that footage was recovered. I thought it was good enough, so I decided to put it up on this new channel. Uh, but I really want- ev all the whole time I was editing that shit, right, whole time I was going through the Renowned Explorers footage, I wanted to play it again, because it's so fun and interesting, and I re- someone re- considering that the channel has about 17 subscribers maybe, when someone actually leaves a comment and makes a request, that actually means quite a lot, because no one else is doing that. So someone did make a request to see this, see more of this, and I'm happy to oblige, I want to check it out again. Yes, adventure mode is the proper way to do it, we want it on classic, because of course, gotta do this properly. So, basically, I've- from going over the footage, I have been- I've been doing more than just, like, editing the game, I've been looking at the game. I've been looking at all the things I missed, all the mechanics and stuff that I missed while I was recording this last time. So, I'm gonna take this session. This isn't gonna be like the one-off I did before, I'm gonna attempt to beat this. So, I'm gonna be taking things a little more slowly, I'm gonna be looking at things and trying to figure out the mechanics, trying to figure out a good way to beat encounters, everything. So, uh, there'll be a lot of editing, so you guys don't have to just sit there and watch me do dumb shit. But I am going to look through these things and just be careful, essentially. Just make sure I know what I'm doing. Alright, I think I'm gonna go with Anna. Uh, I think going for a balanced leader is probably a pretty good idea. And reading through all this, she looks pretty good. And I kinda like her as a character. So, let's see what crew- I gotta be honest, I want Charles. Well, I, I, I want Charles in my team. Maybe that's not a good idea. But, um, I don't care. I want Charles. But for the last one, I'm probably not gonna go with Bia. We're gonna try someone new. Someone different. Someone interesting. So, she's capable, recommended crew, go aggressive or devious. And he's aggressive or devious, so he fits this. So we could either go another devious character or another aggressive one. Okay, yeah. I think this is the party I'm gonna go with. I, uh, feel good about this one. We'll see if it actually turns out to be a good party. We're basically going for a more devious or aggressive approach. There's Charles, I missed him. I genuinely missed him. I like this. This is good. This is good. We're gonna do it, guys. We're gonna explore all the things. I can't wait. It can only go well. I can't fuck this up twice, can I? This is it. You got your stuff. Anna wants to make a big entrance and goes for an elusive treasure. A Viking ship. Oh, so the intro thing is different each time. That's really good. Time for adventure. I don't need the tutorial. I've, um, got the grip on this. Okay, so let's see what we got. First of all, it just occurred to me, I need to check and see what these guys have. She has quick thinking. He has survivor, survivor, survivalist and diplomat. And she has naturalist. So he'd be good for that. Stay a sec. Let's go here. Let's go for the big one straight away. The crew finds some true Viking architecture, a turf house. Due to the lack of wood here, and as it provides better insulation, Vikings built houses covered in earth. This house must hold historical trinkets. That's interesting. You hear a lot of noise coming from it. Oh boy. Oh, four of the same guy. This big turf house is a clubhouse of the Viking Committee, a group that tries to preserve Viking history. They're having a good time with each other, but ignore you. Maybe it's because you don't look Viking enough. These guys probably have some interesting trinkets in their possession. Anna ponders how you can get the best. Go on, Charles. You're the diplomat. Yes! See? He never fails, except for in the last episodes where he failed several times and got cursed. A great success, Charles is accepted into the Viking Committee. Yeah, he looks like a good- he'd fit right in, he's got facial hair, I guess. You learn a lot about the Vikings as well. When the time is right, Charles explains your cause and asks if the Committee has some treasures for you. Chairman responds, Of course, you're one of our Viking friends! What are you looking for? I'll try to find the best I can give. Something like a runestone? Something typically Viking. A Viking war artifact. People love Viking- when people think of Vikings, they think about the raiding, right? And all the battles and shit. People want war artifacts. Got it. I'll go through our Viking collection see if we've got something for you. At least for a few minutes or returns with something. This is the best I could find. I hope it helps. You receive... Ooh. Viking helmet. I mean... 
problem is, I don't know enough about bonuses and shit to go against Pinkerton's recommendations, so I'm still gonna have to go with that for now. If this fucking playthrough falls apart and I die again, I'll actually go online, do some goddamn research, and come back into this again with the necessary knowledge. That is a good find, a fine treasure to take home. You can see he's a party with the Viking committee a little. Charlie Charles even impresses with some party tricks. When the party ends, you continue exploring. Lovely. I love this, because it still feels like a new fucking game. <laughs> because the intro is different, and I've picked new characters. So it's all fresh and interesting. To me, anyway, I bet it's boring to you. But, I don't care. <laughs> when you're a channel this small, the advantage is you can do whatever the fuck you want. Really, you can. And it's wonderful. The crew arrives at an open theater where some villagers are going to perform a piece about the Vikings. The director approaches you. One of our actors is sick and the stand-in is not very talented. Maybe it'd be fun if one of you would play the Viking Jarl. It'd be great for the people to see a new face. This could be Charles's big break. He insists on doing the piece. Alright, Charles. You've only got a 53% chance. Do not die on stage, please. Come on. Come on. Yes! This is going marvelously. Charles seems to be an accomplished actor. No lines were fumbled, and the part of Viking Chieftain is portrayed with conviction. It also gives Charles a boost to speech for this expedition. The crew leaves behind a bedazzled crowd who are now clamoring for your autographs. See, Charles, you may well meet the Queen sooner than you think. And his speech has gone up for the rest of the campaign, which is fantastic. Yeah, plus I want to try an encounter with my new- oh, Shit, I should have upgraded Charles to like- Oh, so Hatties can just fucking solve this immediately. Instead of, instead of having to fight them. Go for it. Hatice hops over the sheep, runs a little while, and turns around. Then Hatice imitates imi imitates the sound of a hay bale. <laughs> the sheep come rushing towards Hatice, thinking they'll find food. In the meantime, Hatice and the crew can get away. Imitates the sound of a hay bale. If any of you out there knows what that sound is, because I live in the countryside, all right? There are hay bales everywhere. I don't know what that sound would be. But if you can find out, uh, do let me know. I'd be very interested in finding out. I want Charles to be a motherfucking tank, just not taking shit from anybody. Supplies may be found here. Well, if we can go for that, then we could keep exploring for longer, and that would be good. Just bleed this initial area dry. I think we need the resources, because last time I played, that second area, it fucked me up. Normally you wouldn't be so excited about this, but you found an abandoned farm. The fields are overgrown with vegetables and even some fruit trees. Sweet. Oh, that's so much. So much for the taking. I like this crew. I like Hatice, I have to admit. I like her design. Little uh, Robin Hood style thing going on. And of course I love Charles. And Anna is perfectly fine. Like, I quite like her design. There is something odd here. There's a trader here. I don't have any gold. Fuck it, let's check it out anyway. You're never, never gonna know if I don't fucking find out. You enter a shop that sells supplies for some work. However, this guy... Seems to be one shady shopkeeper. Buy four supplies for seven res... Negotiate for better terms, obviously. Someone needs to negotiate for better terms. This is simply unacceptable. The guy seems like a tough match, and the diplomatic struggle gives someone the diplomatic negotiations perk. Well, surely... Surely Charles would be the best one for this. Being a natural-born diplomat anyway. The shady shopkeeper gave in to your diplomatic negotiations. Now you can get supplies for a normal price. Four supplies for one resolve. That's still not useful. But we just got Charles a new skill, and I think we can come back there. So now Charles is even more useful. If he wasn't already incredibly useful. Sometimes your crew finds opportunities to promote itself shamelessly in the eyes of the locals to gain stayers. However, say something offensive or make a wrong move and no one will like you. Whose turn is it for social duties? Oh god, we're just not very good at this. Is this worth it? Locals offended. That probably leads to an encounter, I imagine, or at least a loss of status. We could just fuck off and get one token. Which I imagine we don't get if we fail. There's a fucking thing in my shirt, Jeez, you know those little plastic things in which the fucking labels come on? I've had this shirt for nearly two years, and there's a fucking tag in it, and I never knew. Look at that. That was in my hip. Go on, Charles, what's life without r risk? No! Nah! Oops. Charles spoke ungracefully about the savages that have to be dealt with. Charles was actually talking about the sheep, but you don't know if that would have been any better. Well, we're not in Wales, I don't think. This is Ireland, if this is an island. Well, that's even assuming it's near Britain. If we're talking about Vikings, this probably is in Scandinavia. 
You find a local merchant who wants to trade indigenous trinkets with you. Making deals with influential locals can increase your status and be profitable to both. However, anger the merchant and you're left with nothing. Well, Charles has got this, I'm afraid. Char merchant is convinced by Charles. I like how it doesn't do the thing if you have a 100% chance, because it's like, you got it, you don't need the rigmarole. You strike a hard bargain, but you got yourself a deal. You're quite a well-spoken traveller. I don't know what accent that was. All I can say is that whichever nationality is involved in what I just did, I'm sorry, kinda. Two villagers keep following you and annoying you with well-intentioned questions. Wow, you come from all the world? Wow, you've been to London? Wow, you like Brussels sprouts? Wow. This friendly gentleman needs to be convinced to stop following you. Engage! At least pull out your bow, put it between his fucking eyes. Oh, there's a reward for um doing this friendly. Okay, we'll try it that way then. It's the start of the game, we don't have to worry really. Let's try and friendly this guy away. He finds that pleasant. Everyone's nice. Alright, what do you got? Try to encourage. See what you can do. I know Charles is better at this friendly stuff. Ah, oh, she fumbled it. That's fine. As far as I can tell, you don't, um... Nah, Charles sucks at friendly. Oh, well. As far as I can tell, damage doesn't translate to the uh, world map. So it doesn't matter if we kind of get slapped around a bit in this fight, as long as we just win it. Hi ho I love these locals. These are so much nicer than the locals in the last, in, um, Tutorial Island. Alright. You'll get over there. You try and excite him. Uh. For someone so pretty, you think she'd be better at that. Oh, well, you know, whatever. Yes. Everyone knows that Charles is the true attractive member of our expedition. Just fucking look at him. Gorgeous. Nice. Made him confident that we're the coolest and um, he shouldn't get in our way. At least they're not swinging hammers. See, he's just being nice. The problem is he's also irritating. <laughs> Kind of like when I try to be nice. Yeah. Alright, just one more. We'll get her over there, because Charles has plenty of experience already. I don't know if this dri if it directly translates to individual experience, but I do want to level these two up a bit, because Charles has kind of been taking this expedition. Yes, love me. I love you too, my dear fans. Charles is an international celebrity, as well as an explorer. In a kind but firm manner, you explain to them that you have to leave now. Once Anna gives them some foreign candy, they thank you wholeheartedly and go away. That went well. That was nice. I'm glad everything turned out the way it did. Alright, we've only got two supplies left, so we can't dilly-dally shilly-shally for too long. Some kids are playing medieval warriors on the hills, seemingly unaware of their homeland's rich Viking history. Ugh. Anna teaches them about the Vikings. The kids are impressed and start to play Vikings. They'll surely remember you. That's sweet. The Viking boat must be nearby. Once you get there, this expedition will come to an end. I'm ready. Let's go. The crew searches the hills and dales thoroughly until you spot it in the distance. An intact Viking boat. Really far onto land for some reason. Like, right in the center of this landmass, in fact. Can I move this and just show you? No. Oh, well. The crew rushes towards this amazing find. It will surely skyrocket your reputation at the renowned Explorer Society. I'm sure this will go off without a hitch. Oh, no. That guy. From last time. The prick. Thank you, under rail of 24B, and you're a fucking asshole, so fuck off. Seems my explanation wasn't clear enough. Maybe my strong friend Tommy can explain the situation better. He doesn't look very strong. Before Anna can stop Rivalu, his crew fired. Tommy steps forward. No, ah, little explorers, I need to explain you eh, something. I don't even know what his fucking accent's supposed to be. I don't care. I guess they're going for, like, the mobster Italian thing, but I can't do that. Tommy is emotionally hurt and leaves. Tommy thinks you're nice. Tommy is impressed by your skill. I think we want to go aggressive. I think, um... Like last time when we had the devious fellow, uh, and he was impressed when we beat him deviously. So I think you have to fight them at their own game, and that's how you get the best rewards. Because when we did that, we got an extra treasure. Let's do this. Fucking taser him! Ooh! Anna, I love you. <laughs> You're amazing. Go on, pick him off. Oh, 
that's cool. I like you, Adis. I like you a lot. I love this crew. I'm actually really happy with this crew. You know what it's time for. You boy, you guys and girls know what it's time for. Charles. Buddy. Go on. Give him the fucking business! Oh! Down. Right in the button. Right in the fucking button. No chance. He ain't getting up for at least 20 minutes. Which implies brain damage, by the way. That's how I fight. You just grab a nearby item and just fucking spin. Just go. You'll hit some- Not like him. You're supposed to spin. You forgot the spin, buddy. That's why that fucked up for you. That's right, Anna's fairly- Yeah, she's fairly durable. She's gonna taser the fuck out of him. This is gonna be great. Go on, Anna. Fucking have him. <laughs> like, it's a big fancy electrical device, but it's basically a fucking taser. That's amazing. I love it. Okay. Oh boy, he's gonna take some wearing down. So let's pick off his buddies first. I think that'd be wise. God, he's dead. You've killed two people, Hadith. We could at least argue that Anna incapacitated them. You straight up killed them. There's no such thing as like a... Well, I guess you could have rubber arrows, like rubber bullets, but I don't think they'd be very... I don't know. Thinking about it, if you hit someone in the stomach with like a comp... That's not a compound bow she's got there, but if you had like a compound bow, hit him in the stomach with like a rubber arrow, they'd be down for a while. They'd probably throw up. Go on. Fucking sock him. Oh, Charles is the best. Absolutely love him. Okay. What you got, big boy? Oh, you're going after our lead? Ow. Oh, he's got a group attack. Fucking hell. He's pretty durable. Alright. Here's what I'm thinking. Move you back one, just so you're not in his range. She will attack him. Wrecked. We're gonna move Anna. Actually, no, because we can move Charles in, way, in his way. That's fine. We're gonna use... Hang on, doesn't this heal? Can heal an ally's spirit by 30% times speech. Can we use that on you? Yeah. Just give her a little more topped off. We don't want to be losing uh, fucking... What's it called? Resolve. We don't want to be losing resolve this early. That would be a bad, bad thing. And then if we move Charles over here. Now I know um, group insult. Group insult is good for this. Because it makes him attack Charles and it's going to lower his defenses. So fucking Anna will just be able to decimate him next turn. Or heal Charles if it's necessary. And we can stay hostile, which is uh, exactly what we want. Okay, so yep, end turn. God, I'm having a lot of fun with this, actually. I knew I wanted to play this again. I knew it. And now that I am playing it again, it's just confirming... Like... That it was a good idea to play this again. What fucking... What was your name? Rusty King. Thank you for asking me to do this, because I actually really enjoy myself again. It's been a year, and it's just as fun as I remember. Okay. Go on, Hattice. Fuck him up. That's good. That's good. Alright. Now, Anna, you're the fucking um, expedition leader. I think you deserve the honours. Tase him. <laughs> I love that she has a taser. <laughs> Aggressive victory. I'm so strong. People should revere my strength. You're right, Charles. He knocked out two people instantly with one uppercut. Dude's basically Hercules. Tommy's pretty impressed. You're strong, pretty impressive, but now I have to go. You deserve this treasure map for your victory. Uh, bye. And he leaves to follow Rivalu, who has already somehow managed to take the Viking ship and fuck off. Like, he managed to lift that shit over his head and just march away. Because once again, I'd like to point out... Sorry, you can hear my fucking tobacco pouch rustling, but it's not a big deal. I'd like to point out that boat was not near, near the ocean. Not even close. Like... If it shows us the world map before we get out of here, you'll be able to see for certain it is not near the coast. It's not near a river leading to the fucking ocean. It's not near nothing. It's slap bang in the middle of the fucking island. We got some praise in the treasure map. You left with a cryptic treasure map. Its meaning is pretty cryptic. Everyone takes a look.
Alright. Okay, the treasure map is passed around. After investigating it, the crew states their interpretations of the treasure map. It points to another Viking antiquity site, it points to a difficult to reach area, or a landmark, a landmark on the map that locals might recognize. I'm gonna go with this one, just because it gives us a pure, even chance of getting each artifact. Following Anna's advice, the crew conducted research in the area where the longship used to be. The, caref the crew carefully follows the clues and bits left behind by history and nature and manages to find something. A new treasure. Yeah, and we got study for it, which is good because we've got fuck all. The leprechaun! This has already gone out. Fucking hell, I learned it two seconds ago. 